In this lab, it's the first time that we're not appending our victim's request to the prefix that we've poisoned the backend with. Instead, we're poisoning the backend with a complete request, effectively poisoning the backend's response queue. And we'll be able to see responses to requests sent by our victim and leak their session cookie in the response. I'll also show you how to automate this attack with Burp Intruder because that makes it quite easy to solve this lab. Let's get started. I'm on the homepage of the lab here, and the first thing you want to do is switch to Burp and then go to proxy and HTTP history and grab the get slash request for the root endpoint and send it to repeater and switch to repeater. And we want to confirm the vulnerability first. So I'm going to right click and switch the request method over to post. And then I'm going to delete unnecessary header. So anything up from content type and underneath the host header. I'm also going to go here and show non printable characters to show new lines or carriage return line feeds that will be handy at the end of the lab, but also for request smuggling in general. And then I'm going to go to the request settings here and turn off update content length automatically. And the next thing I'm going to do is remove this content length zero header and replace it with a transfer encoding chunked header. And the reason we're doing that is because if the front end is using HTTP2 and the front end is using HTTP 1.1 to talk to the back end, the front end will be using the HTTP2 built in mechanism to determine content length. But if it's talking HTTP 1.1 with the backend, what we're hoping is that it will copy the transfer encoding chunked header when it rewrites the HTTP 2 request to a HTTP 1.1 request to talk to the backend. The consequence of that is, is that if the backend server follows the RFC and sees this transfer encoding chunked header, it will actually prefer the transfer encoding chunked header. And that'll allow us to do request smuggling because then we're in a situation where the front end is using HTTP2 content length to determine the length of the content, while the back end is using transfer encoding chunked based on HTTP 1.1. Then I'm going to finish this attack request by going here and uh, actually sending a terminating chunk first to indicate to the back end server that our request has ended. And then we're going to poison the back end server with a get request for something that doesn't exist using HTTP 1.1. And we're also going to add an x ignore header for a value of x, but not followed by a carriage return line feed, because we want our normal request to be appended straight after the x here. That's very important. And then I'm going to rename this tab to attack request, and then go back to proxy and HTTP history, and send a second copy of this get slash request to repeater, switch to repeater, and this will become our normal request. And then go to the attack request and we're going to send it. And then go to the normal request and send it as well. And we get a 200 OK now. We're expecting to see a 404. That could be because the lab victim is browsing the site in the background and it's eating up the uh, prefix that we've previously poisoned the backend with in our uh, attack request. So let's repeat that process a few times until we see a 404. So send the attack request and send the um, normal request and we get a 404 now. So don't worry if you get a 200 the first few times, just repeat the process until you see a 404, because that confirms the vulnerability. So let's exploit that. So I'm going to switch back to the attack request. And the first thing we want to do is um, alter the URI path for our original request here and just put something that doesn't exist. And then in the second, the, the prefix that we're poisoning the backend with, we want to turn this into a complete request so that we can poison the backend's uh, response queue. So I'm going to remove the x ignore header here. And instead, I'm going to replace it with the host header here. Just copy it from up here and paste it. And make sure that you have a carriage return line feed after the host header. And you also want an extra carriage return line feed at the end, just because that makes the request RFC compliant, because the request starts with a request method, in this case, get and a URI path. And it ends with a final carriage return line feed. So that tells the backend server that this is a complete request that it can execute. So when we send this attack request, the backend server will respond to us with a 404 based on the post request up here. And then it'll execute the get request, so the complete get request here, and queue up a 404 response for that request in its response queue. And it's at this moment that we hope that our victim sends a login request, which the backend will respond to with a 302. But because our 404 response is still in its queue, our victim will receive that 404 response. And we will then send another request and hope that we get the next response in the queue, the 302 response to our victim's login request, as that response will contain our victim's session cookie. Now, we do need a bit of luck timing-wise for this to work, but I'll show you how to automate this process after I've shown it uh, manually. So for the manual attack, all we have to do is we have to keep sending this attack request over and over until in the response, we see something other than a uh, 404, because we know that the 404s are a response 
to our own original request or to our own um, request that we smuggled in through request smuggling. So we just have to keep repeating that until we see a 302. You might see a few 200s as well. That's just an indication that the lab victim is browsing the site, and that's the, the 200 responses that we see as an effect. So I'm just going to send the attack request here, and we get a 404 not found. I'm just going to keep sending it. And as you see, this is a bit of trial and error. You need a lot of luck um, timing-wise to be able to catch a 302 response to our victim's login attempt. So what's actually easier is to just automate this process um, through Burp Intruder. So I'm going to right-click here and send this request to Intruder, and then go to Intruder. And the first thing you want to do is make sure that attack type is Sniper. We also, we don't want to add any payload markers because we want to keep the request as is. And we go to payloads, and instead of simple list, we'll pick null payloads, and we'll continue indefinitely because we'll just pause the attack once we've caught a 302 response. And then in the settings, it's also important that you um, turn off update content length header automatically because otherwise Burp Intruder will add a content length header here and that will break our request smuggling. Then go to resource pool, and we want to create a new resource pool here with maximum concurrent requests set to one. And let's say that the delay between requests will be a little under one second, so 800 milliseconds. And then we can uh, start this attack. Next thing we want to do is go to uh, filter here. And we just want to see the 302 responses. So turn off uh, 400, 500s, and 200s. And then click Apply. And now all we have to do is wait and drink some coffee <laughs> or some tea or whatever beverage of your choosing until we get a 302 response here. So I'm just going to speed up this part until we get to a 302 response. So we got quite lucky. We got a 302 response after 39 requests. So I'm going to go here and pause the attack. I'm going to select this 302 um, response that we got and go to response. And yep, this is a login attempt from the administrator. And it was successful because they got a 302. And we have a session cookie here. So I'm going to copy that and switch back to the lab. I'm just going to refresh the page a few times just to clear the response queue, because otherwise we might get errors. And then I'm going to go to the cookie editor and then go to session and just replace the session value here and save it and then refresh the page. And you can see if I go to my account, we're logged in as the administrator now, and we have access to the admin panel. So let's delete the user Carlos and refresh the page. And there we go. We've successfully solved the lab. I hope this was helpful to you, and thank you for watching.